Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic on the 29th of February, no less, Leap Day. And we're going to celebrate with a Leap Day themed puzzle by Arctan, whose birthday it is today. Um, I think it is Arctan's eighth birthday, um, which means that he's not actually eight. Well, he is eight, but, but you know what I mean? He's four times eight, really. 32 is, is how we might like to think of Arctan's age. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this puzzle is, is, it's lovely. Look, there's 29 here. 29's all over the place, in fact, uh, with the rinky dink being that twos and nines do not count. So in the cages, you have to make the digits add up to 29, but any twos and nines that might appear don't count. Um, on the diagonals, twos and nines don't count. And Arctan has even designed this to tell us that his difficulty rating for this one is two out of nine, uh, which the testers said was, um, what did they say? They said it was sli a slight underestimate in their opinion, but only slight. So it, it's, it's probably not genuinely approachable this puzzle but it's 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 certainly approachable if you're relatively new to variant sudoku but apparently it's lovely so this is what we're going to have a go at um on this leap day i hope those of you who 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 might have been expecting proposals received them and accepted them um as as is the tradition <laughs> at least i hear it's the tradition i don't actually know anybody who has been proposed to on the 29th of february I, although i think i do do know someone through the channel i feel like i've read read that out on the channel um quite a long time ago in fact i wonder if i did a video on the last leap day it's not impossible because we've done a video a day every day since the start of the first covid lockdown when was that was that more than four years ago it could have been i, I don't know actually I'm, I'm gonna go look that up after i record this video um but what else do i have to tell you about today let me have a look Actually, I'll start with a thank you for those of you who joined us on our stream last night of Hexcells Infinite. Um, we enjoyed it again. We love, we just love having your company, frankly. Um, and we didn't do too badly last night. There was, a, there, there wasn't a, a minimal number of wine clicks, but there were less than there have been on certain other occasions. And we did discover that there is a new game out that it, I think would be a really good one for us to stream. It's called islands of insights or something insights of islands it's something like that the only fly in that ointment is apparently um it might trigger my motion sickness but everything i've read about the game makes me think it would be a great game for us to stream so we're definitely going to look into that um soon so watch this space maybe we'll be able to do uh, a stream of that in due course uh, now, the next thing I need to mention is because it's the 29th of February t today, tomorrow is the 1st of March. There is a knowledge bomb for you. Um, and that means it is Patreon reward day. So we've got a brand new competition starting tomorrow. Uh, it's called Evening Attractions. Do I have a teaser? I've got a teaser picture. There we go. It's a negative constraint themed Sudoku hunt featuring seven puzzles in all. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's one that everybody should be able to do so uh, definitely have a go at it it'll, it'll go live at four o'clock tomorrow afternoon when actually tomorrow I also will be able to re uh, release um, my crossword video um, talking about Dean Mayer's extraordinary puzzle in last weekend's Sunday Times and it'll either be tomorrow or the day after just so as we don't flood patreon with new stuff but uh, there's going to be my solve of region geometry by Emre Kolotoglu which is a uh, a Lord of the Rings length edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Um, other than that, I've got I've got some birthdays and shout outs to do to celebrate Leap Day, but two of them come with humble pie, uh, not chocolate cake on my on my part. Yesterday, I missed two birthdays. I'm very sorry to Sergey, uh, whose wife Anya wrote in plenty of time, and then I I somehow missed the message. I'm so sorry, Sergey, and I know that you are currently doing a computer science research internship in Austria, which is why Anya can't be with you today, uh, which she's very sorry about, but she loves you dearly and uh, sends you all good wishes, as do I. And I hope you were able to find some chocolate cake and had a good birthday yesterday. And then over there in Dublin, 
Yesterday was also Sasha's birthday, who turned 21. And I know this because your boyfriend, Nathan, wrote to us, Sasha, and said you'd appreciate the shout out. So I'm sorry, I, I'm only doing it today. Um, but I gather Nathan was sorting you out chocolate cake. So I hope that happened and I hope you had a great birthday. Um, now, a, an actual birthday today is Graham, who has turned 12, by which I think he means 48. Um, and de Graham was definitely getting chocolate cake. And so excited was he about this, he was promising to send me a picture. Um, so, Graham, I will hold you to that. And I hope it was a good cake. And I hope you have a great birthday today. And then finally, not a birthday, but a sort of anniversary for one of the great constructors in the world of Sudoku, the peddling pianist. Um, uh, and today, the 29th of February, marks the first anniversary um, of when he got together with his fiance, his now fiance, Alana. Um, and it, well, si since they got together, uh, they've managed to live together in two different houses and had their baby daughter Orla, who's I, I remember um, I remember shouting out Orla when when she first arrived. Um, and as uh, as the peddling pianist quipped, it's amazing what you can achieve uh, when it's uh, when it's been actually four years since your first anniversary, <laughs> or for it's taken four years to, a, to to reach your first anniversary. Um, so yeah, the peddling pianist. Alana and Orla, many happy ret returns, if you see what I mean. And with that said and done, let's turn our attention to solving some Sudoku and have a look at Leap Day by Arctan. And these are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we have to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Digits in cages sum to the indicated total, which is always 29. There are only two cages, right? And it's always 29. Uh, as do digits along diagonals, and they, okay, so they, these diagonals also sum to 29. Uh, in both cases, digits may repeat if allowed by other rules. Okay, so that is actually a bit different from normal Sudoku. Uh, actually, and it's completely obvious that digits must be able to repeat because there are many more than nine cells in that cage. But okay, so digits can repeat in cages and diagonals. And to celebrate Leap Day, brackets 29 February, totals for cages and diagonals leap over twos and nines, i.e. these digits count as zero towards the sum of any cages or diagonals that they appear in or on. Right, so any 29s, any two, no, any twos or nines that appear in the cages or on the diagonals count as zero for the totals. And that is all the rules. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I mean, my first thought here is the 29 is a ludicrously low total for so many Sudoku cells. Um, but how are we going to get a handle on that? So these squares, even if they include a two, they couldn't include more than one two and they couldn't include more than one nine. So say these two squares were a two nine pair, we'd still have five counting digits in box five, which would not be twos or nines. So the minimum that those five counting digits would be would be one, three, four, five, and six, which add up to, I want to say 19, because the triangular number for six is 21, and I missed out the two from it. I think 19. Um, so 19 is, is most of the way towards 29. Already those two can't be two or nine, so they're at least a one and a three. So what am I up to now? 23. I'm up to 23. But these two could both be twos and nines. Ooh. And that could be a two and a nine. That would mean that one had to count, but it could be a one. So what am I up to now? I'm up to 20, 24. And that could be a two or a nine. Oh, Bob, that doesn't work. I don't think that works. I'm so sorry. I was convinced that that seemed an awful lot of cells to make 29 out of. But the thing is, when you can count digits as zero, suddenly everything becomes... And you can repeat twos and nines in the cages as well. It becomes a lot 
a lot less a um, lot less clear we've got another big 29 cage here and that's got a lot of digits in box 7 we can only put 1 2 and 1 9 into that sort of congregation of digits so that one that one's got six counting digits in it oh okay and one of those is not two so that's 26 at least if i use my triangular numbers trick the triangular numbers for seven is 28 and if i knock the two out of it i get 26 that's probably right um that's what my brain is telling me anyway i'd never trust my brain anymore though one three four five one three four five six seven yeah it is it is 26 okay well done brain well that's that's huge 26 out of 29 so so what we're saying here is the absolute minimum value of those squares even if I put a 2 and a 9 in there counting as 0 is 26 which means these th 6 squares can only give me another 3 as an absolute maximum right and um, well even if I stuff them with 2s and 9s there's, there's still always going to be a counting digit in those three squares and there's always going to be a counting digit in those three squares because even if I put 2 and 9 here and 2 and 9 here I'm still going to have a counting other digit and those counting digits could be 1s but actually they are 1s then aren't they because if they were if they were not 1 given there's a counting digit down here let's imagine it wasn't a counting 1 what would it be? well then it would be a counting 3 at least but it can't be a counting 3 because then these cells are already adding up to at least 29 and we know there's a counting digit in those squares as well and that's going to break the bank so the counting digits well so what we're effectively learning is that these are one two nine triples i think because there must be only one counting digit in each triomino and it must be a one otherwise we're going to get up too high too quickly but right but now this doesn't have quite the same profile it did because actually we need the digits here to add up to 27 when they could have only added up to 26 um right so what does that mean that means they've got to be something like one three four five six and then probably we switch the seven foot and eight we switch the seven for an eight i think actually maybe it's easier to just use the secret is it the secret is something i only share with my very favorite people but if you're watching this video you're definitely one of those people um let me think about the secret in this the secret is that any complete box of a sudoku because of the rules of sudoku contains the digits one to nine once each and those digits add up to 45 so if they add up to 45 but I need these squares to add up to 27, including a 2 and a 9. So they actually add up to 38. Yeah, so this is a 7 to make the box add up to 45. So that's a 7 in the corner. Um, these are all the other digits, but once the 2 and the 9 get cancelled out from them, they only add up to 27. Plus the 1 here, plus the 1 here gives us 29 that's not a two there we go so, sudoku be i'm being made to do sudoku after only 13 minutes arctan that's outrageous i believe you're making me do sudoku in your sudoku puzzle um right well what's that mean what does that mean what have we actually got from that one thing we've got from that actually is that those two squares now can't be non-counting in this other cage but I can't remember where we were in terms of the minimums for this other cage. We know those two were counting because they can't be two and nine. So these were at least one and three. That is at least three now. Because it can't be one, two or nine. So that that is counting and at least three. That is counting and at least three. So actually, those four squares together are contributing at least 10. That's it. <laughs> these four squares together are con contributing at least 10's worth of digits to this great big 
ginormous cage, and we worked out those squares were contributing at least 19. Um, which means actually that's very interesting as well for these squares, which now must contribute absolutely diddly squat to this enormous cage. Otherwise, the cage total is going to break. I'm not actually sure that anything I've just said is completely correct. So I'm going to go through that again. But that's where I think my brain has taken me. Um, so let's just do that slowly. What I'm claiming is that if there was a 2 and a 9 in here, the minimum of the other digits is 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that is 19. Yeah, so these add up to a minimum of 19. They're a minimum of a 1, 3 pair. These two are both minimum of 3. And that is 10 plus 19, which is 29. So that's correct. Right, so we go 3, 3, 1. This, right. Oh, yeah, so these greys have to not count. So they're all 2s and 9s. So now we're getting all sorts of things going on. We've got we've got a one two nine triple here, so the one of which is down at the bottom. So that's not a one. We've got a one two nine triple here, the one of which is there. So that's not a one. We might have to we might have to keep track of our of our twos and nines because instance for instance that digit now is definitely the same as that digit. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but in this box, we surely know those two digits, don't we? They are 7 and 8. And we know that because they're the digits that are not included in the cage. And we know the cage has to have 2 and 9 in it, which actually have to go in those squares by Sudoku, because we've got these 1, 2, 9 triples looking into this box. No, no. Well, that, that is true. But we've also, we've got exactly the same profile with one, haven't we? Where does one go in this box? It's also in the same squares as the one, as the two and the nine. So this is a one, two, nine triple. So now we've got, yeah, okay. So now we've got this weird crossing thing where we've got one, two, nine triple in row five and a one, two, nine triple in column five but the one in both of those triples has to from the horizontal positions be in one of these two squares and from the vertical position be in one of those two squares so it can't be here and here so it must be there it must be at the junction um, so there is a one here there's a two nine pair here and now we definitely want to color our twos and nines i think because now i can actually relate this 2-9 and this 2-9 to the middle box and that's going to also disambiguate it in the in the funny funny things um, aka these squares <laughs> um, the technical term uh, right hang on let's let's actually I don't really want to get rid of all the coloring because it's been quite useful but I think we better so let's get rid of the coloring there let's get rid of the coloring there let's get rid of the coloring there and the coloring here and we go from the middle because that's going to provide the interaction so let's make that green and that blue so that's now green that's now blue which means that's now blue there must be a green down here there must be a blue down here this well hmm, that's green and blue i don't know which is which that one is green so that one is blue so that one is green so there's a blue in one of those two now by sudoku there's a green in one of these two i've got a horrible feeling this isn't going to do anything i've got a green in one of those two blue is in one of no blue is in one of those two Oh dear. Oh, green? No. <laughs> Blue? No. Oh, Bobbin, sorry. This is, this is, uh, this is, I think, not what I was meant to do next. 
three. I can do Sudoku. Where's three in boxing? Well, in column one, it's there. So three is in one of these squares. It gives me an opportunity for a three in the corner. Um, okay. That's great, but seven is in one of those squares in box one using the power of this seven. Oh dear, um, I think probably we're going to have to look at the diagonals now, but let me just, let me just mull this over for a moment or two longer. Could we do anything with ones? Uh, well, probably not, but one is in this domino, so one is over here, and one is in this domino, so one is over there, and I've got that, oh dear. No, I'm not, oh, well that's not one, I suppose, so one is up here. No, okay, I think we're going to have to turn our attention to elsewhere three in the middle box is in one of those squares i've just seen right okay let's have a look at the diagonals which are jolly long and we don't know how many bits of them are not are not twos and nines although that, for example that square is not a, is it is a counting diagonal digit because it sees two and nine. Actually, that digit as well. Right, okay, this is interesting. So probably what we're meant to do is to work out how many cells on these diagonals actually count. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to use the I'm 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 going to use the hex cells uh, equivalent in in Sven software. So let's actually highlight the diagonals and see what we can see. So those squares are one diagonal. Let's use different color there. So that's that can be another diagonal. And we've got two diagonals coming down. Let's use, actually, I don't really want to use that. Can I use gray maybe? I'll use that color so I don't pollute my blues and greens. And I'll use yellow for the other one. There we go. Now, what does that tell us? How many of these cells are actually counting in each case? Um, and how are we going to, are we going to have to color those in as well? We're going to have, it's, it's got very colorful this all of a sudden. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's, let's actually start there because I can see many interesting things about the grey diagonal. That is counting, for sure. It sees 2 and 9, and it's not 1, 2 or 3. So that digit is at least a 4. That digit is counting, seems to be able to be a 3, because um, it, sees, it sees 2 and 9, and it can't be 1. That digit is also counting, it sees 2 and 9 and is not one so that right so that's at least a four now um because it can't be three if i've hypothecated if i've hypothecated the three for this square so now these squares are at least equal to nine and eight seventeen twenty oh bobbins look at that <laughs> it's true that these count but these could be ones so these have to add up to a a maximum of nine but they could be a one eight pair bother uh, i suppose they do count it is tr in fact the interesting thing is that entire gray diagonal is full of counting cells which is very strange uh how do i what should i make should i make those cells gray to tell me they count yeah, we'll have grey. Grey will mean the opposite of a 2 or a 9. Okay, so let's try the yellow one. That that counts. That counts as well. 
that counts because it sees two and nine in the column that that counts and is massive actually the first four cells of this diagonal all count and that one is a big digit that one that one sees two and nine that counts as well yeah i mean actually any box where i've got blue and green pencil marked i can count that counts right this entire diagonal counts right <laughs> okay let's check this one so that's at least a four as well oh what we might have to do is add up the diagonals together because now you can see these two squares are at least a four or five pair so the sort of you know they're taking you can't put four in both positions but we'll do this one individually first so that's at least four that's at least oh, bother. that could be a three um that one is not one so that one is at least three as well so that right i'm going to make that one four because it, i'm going to say it can't be three if i've hypothecated the three for this one so this one is already quite big it's at least 18 at this point unless my maths has deserted me so these can't add up to more than 11 and that can't be one yes look at these two squares they are at least three and four they're like these two they are at least three and four because they can't be one and they can't be and they have to count so they can't be two so now i'm up to at least uh what did i say did i say 18 before 18 and so i'm now on 25 so the maximum value of this is four it can't be two nine or three so this is one or four i don't believe it that's so annoying <laughs> that's so annoying if that couldn't be one this whole diagonal would be minimal um probably not the technical term but we'll we'll adopt it it would be minimized um oh dear okay so it's going to be something on the other diagonals probably either that or sudoku one of those two things is what's going on so where should we look next um oh the other thought is can that actually be seven then if that's seven oh no it can be look at that if that's seven and that's one these two extreme digits sum up to eight which is exactly the same as they would add up to if these were double four so we can't knock seven out of this square which i was suddenly thinking might be a a reasonable course of action hmm okay so I think we're going to have to play that role again on this diagonal and on this diagonal. See, that's counting, isn't it? Nine in this box is restricted, actually, by the, the given digit, something I pay no attention to because I get given them so rarely. Nine is in one of these two squares. Oh, good. right. Okay, look, 9 is in one of those two squares by Sudoku using this 2 9 pair here and this 9 here. And that 9 is looking at that digit, right? So that's a 1. Now, 1 is, well, that's a 1 as well, actually, as a result of that. But 1 is not a blue digit. So that's, that's become a blue digit, which is either 2 or 9 oh and the one here is giving me that digit well, we'll come back to that in a minute i just want to think about if that's blue has that done anything else i don't know actually maybe it hasn't but, but what we do get we get the one here and that's great because that's knocking one out of this square so that has become a four which means that certainly can't be seven anymore so that's the seven um there's a seven in one of these two but i think what we were saying if that was four this all had to be bare minimum didn't it let's check so we had a minimum seven a minimum seven that's 14 
18, 25 and 4 is 29. Beautiful. So this diagonal, the yellow diagonal, is minimumed. So that we've got 4 there. We've got 7 here, which gives me an 8 here. And these have to be... Th ah, look, both of these have to be 3, 4 pairs. But there's a 3 here, so that's got to be 3. That's got to be 4. Oh, I don't know what that's doing. What does... Oh, these pencil marks were my minimum values. Ah, but hang on, hang on, hang on. There's something going on in the middle box. Because I've got three pencil marked. Yeah, where's the three in the middle box now? It's only there, isn't it? So that's not three. This is a three, four pair. So that's three, that's four. Where is four in the middle box now? don't know if I know the answer to that, but I do know where 4 is in box 3. It's there by Sudoku. Where is 4 in box 8? I don't know. <laughs> it's in one of those two squares. So it's in one of those two squares. Where is 4? Yes, where is 4 in box 7? And I think... It's in the same cells as the 9 there, look. So that's become a 4-9 pair. And that gives me a 4 there, look. Why is that a 4? Oh, that was, that was when I was minimuming the grey diagonal. So this is now a 4 in box, um, box 5. These two squares are, I want to say, 5 and 6 maybe. And that means... Well, these squares are 5, 6, and 8. OK. And now 2 is in one of these squares in box 7. Seven in row 7 is in one of those two squares. which I can write, where is 7 in box 2? And the answer is there. And that's very pretty, because that gives me this 7. It pencil marks 7 in, box, in row 3. It pencil marks 7 in row 8. And I don't know, it might not be possible to put 7 on the grey diagonal. Let's, let's add up the grey diagonal again. What have we got now? We've got 16 and at least 5. 21 at least. If that was 7, that would have to be a 1. Oh. <laughs> okay, then. That might be possible. Um, that digit is... Oh, I don't know, do I? Do I know what that digit is? Not sure. What would happen if there wasn't a 1 on this diagonal down here? Where were we up to? 21. If, these, if, there, if there was no 1 in these squares, these have to add up to 8 without using 2. Oh, they could be 3 and 5. Okay, yeah, that's possible. So I can't really do much down there, I don't think. Let's check instead. Oh, I don't know. Should we check this, the red diagonal? Let's have a look at that. So this square... Oh, well, actually, look at row 7. I've not put 5, 6, and 8 into it. So let's put 5, 6, and 8 into it. And what can we delete? Absolutely diddly. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Bobbins. Um, but that is quite a big number. What about that number then? Is that counting? Actually, I should tick these off, shouldn't I? I should use my patented method of labelling them grey. That's grey. Definitely. That one isn't. That one might be grey. That one's grey. That one. Uh, see, the problem is there are three potentially non-counting digits on this red thing. I think this is not going to be profitable. We, at the moment, we've got 11 on it, uh, 16 minimum. And this square is a minimum of 5. 
so we're we're only up to 21 and we've got we've got absolutely no clue what's going on on the rest of the diagonal so i'm going to declare the red diagonal substandard and naughty and have a look at the purple diagonal the pink diagonal instead um that one that could be a zero because that could be a nine that could be a zero <laughs> Operation. That one counts. That is definitely counting. Three is a counting digit. Uh, this is this is a nothing as well. So we've got ten on this diagonal minimum. That one is that is counting at least. That one is counting actually. Oh, that's quite an interesting cell. Yeah, the, re the reason that I can see that's counting from my, my shading of blue and green in box three, but if you actually look at it, it's being seen by two different colours. So that almost looks like a designed cell. What does that mean? That cell is, is not one, two, three, four, or five. No, sorry, it could be five. One, two, three, or four or nine it could be a five that one that one could be a one oh bother and we've only got 10 on the diagonal so far anyway what about that one that's also counting and that one could be a one again yeah you see there's something odd about this there is something odd about this by which I mean that the fact that we can put so many ones and none counting digits on these diagonals makes it feel like there's, there's, there's an exploding number of degrees of freedom. So what is it I'm missing? I don't know. I think it's probably Sudoku knowing me. Five, sixes, and eights in this column are very restricted. Look again. Five, six, and eight. So we had a five, six, eight triple here. We've got a five, six, eight triple here. We've got a five, six, eight triple here. So that means. We have got this eight, though. This column has got a lot of digits in it. It's only got a five, six pair left. Yeah, look, there's the same. It's, it's five, six, and eight everywhere. This column hasn't got five, six, and eight into it. Right, so there's a five, six, eight triple in row one now. So we've not put in one, two, three, and nine. Oh, that is outrage. Arctan, how could you do that to me on your birthday? <laughs> that is outrageous. Look at this row. One, two, three, and nine to place in the row and that square sees three two and nine in the column and that's going to be huge i think because that oh it, ah yeah it is going to be huge because not only is it is it a known digit but it is one and one was the digit that i was feeling was the most you know it was it was messing up all the totals along the diagonals so this square here well that's now one apparently by sudoku hang on let's double click the ones this is not one so it's definitely had effect on that cell. I'm not sure whether it's anything else as well. Hmm, well, that cell as well. So these two used to have the ability to be one, but no longer do. So that we probably have to revisit the, the, the pink and the gray diagonal. I mean, if that can't be one, what's going on there? This is at least, it's not three, why is it? Oh, it's not three, no, there's three in the column. Um, so that digit is at least five now, I think, probably. So we've now got at least 10 there, plus 16 is 26. So this is a maximum of three. And it's not two. So that is a one or a three only. 
and that's going to mean what if it if it was it can only be three if this is five if it's one it's a difference of two isn't it so this can't be eight anymore if that's eight I'm going to claim that this breaks because if that's eight we've got eight plus 16 is 24 plus 5 at least is 29 and that would have to be a 0 so that's not 8 uh, it's 5 or 6 yeah you see look at this this row as well has got 5 6s and 8s to place in it oh botheration though that's not it's not actually it's not actually solved the puzzle at all. What are the other digits then I've got to put in here? I know there's a two in one of these. Oh, and I knew that digit now. That has to be higher. That's at least five as well, isn't it? That sees two, three, and four. So that's at least five. Oh yeah, but this is, this is the place where these can all be not counting at all digits. What about that one? Ah, that's not one either now. So this one is, yeah, this is, this is the cell that sees the 2 and the 9. So this square can't be 3, so that's at least 5. Right. Right, okay, so look at those three squares together. These two are now at least a 5 and a 6, which is 11. That's at least 5, which is 16. 26 minimum so that yeah that's <laughs> done, done right okay i know what that digit is ah this is it <laughs> this is very clever actually how can you claim this is three was it no two out of nine no it's not it's not this is it's beautiful logic i mean it's amazing to do this using only the numbers two and nine like this it is amazing as a construction but but this digit is now under too much pressure to survive by which i mean we've got at least 16 26 in the grays so imagine that this was not a, a none counting nine it would then be a four and count and it would take the total of this diagonal to to 30 which is impossible so that digit is a none counting nine and that makes well, so it's nine, but it also makes blue into two. So blue is two wherever it appears, which means that nine has become green, I suppose. That's the corollary of that. Nine is green. Now that means, that means this is green and that is blue. This is four by Sudoku. So that's four by Sudoku. One, two, three. We've done all the fours just like that. How many nines have we done? Well, that nine needs to be green. Um, two, three. Phone is buzzing at me. Um, oh, that might mean I'm about to get a visitor. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, if I get a visitor, there might be a small pause. Let me... Um, let me try and concentrate. Okay, these squares. All right, this is nine by Sudoku which must be have a one here to finish this column the nine is green this square is not green and we get an x-wing of greens left over and an x-wing of twos left over but oh look and that's a one so that's knocking this out from being a one which makes that three and didn't that mean this had to be minimumed i think we need two fives on this diagonal now i'm not sure we've got 15 plus four is 19 so we need double five beautiful beautiful that's no longer a five uh this is not five this is not five um okay is it or is it threes i've got lots of threes yes it's i've got a three in the corner there 
that's three in the corner, that's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. And that square, because it had to be three by Sudoku, there are four threes looking at box three. That's how I knew that was a three. Three is not a two or a nine, so that removes its coloredness. And that's got to be the blue digit, and that's got to be the green digit. Now, the green digit is a nine. That means that's a nine by the power of greennesses. Uh, this square is a 2 by the power of blueliness, so that's a 2, that's a 1. That gets fully blued in, that gets loses its blue, but not its religion. Um, and now, now what do we do? I've done, all, I've done all the 2s and the 9s in the grid, I think. These lose their 3 corner mark, that's going to confuse me no end otherwise. Okay, that's become a grey digit, so we, we probably now need to revisit either the red diagonal or the um, or the purple diagonal. Although the purple diagonal still s oh no, look, I haven't got the two there. That's a two. Oh, that's well, that's not great. <laughs> I wanted it to be counting. <laughs> so now we've got ten, uh, at least eleven there. So 21, oh goodness, no, that's not that's not where we need it. We're going to need the red diagonal, I think. So the red diagonal, this digit has started to count. So that is at least 5. In fact, let's pencil mark it, 5, 6 or 8. So we've got at least 9, 13, 16. Oh, it's no good, is it? So that's only going to give us 26. Goodness. Okay, so we need. I need to think harder again. Right. Let's try Sudoku. <laughs> if, if we're desperate, we'll try Sudoku. These squares. Oh, where's five in this box? It's, it's placed. That's five. So that should be seven. That's not on a diagonal. So I suppose we don't really get to do much with that. That's lo lost a five from it. So that's at least. A six or an eight now. These five, six, eights are all... Oh, five in this box goes there. So this is a five. So this is a five. This is a six. Good grief. This is so clever. It really is clever, this. This is a six, seven pair. I do that slowly in case I can do better. Um, these squares are... Of, are are now a 6-8 pair, which suggests that's a 5. How many 5s have I got? Loads. Yeah, I can get another 5 here. And I should be able to get the last 5, I think. That's the last 5. So these squares are 6-7-8. Six, 6-7-8. Seven, 6-7-8. Six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. That's not 7, look. So this is a 6 or an 8. That's a 6 or an 8. Um... Hang on, what digit is it? It's 1, isn't it? I've not put in down here. So that's 1, that's 7, that's 6, 8, so that's 7. Now, so that's 6, and that's going to do it, isn't it? 8, 7, 6, 8. Um, you might have to think about that digit in a moment. Uh, that, that will probably be sensible. Actually, let's do it now. So what have we got? We've got 4... We've got 10, so we've got, oh, we've got 20 if we do it like that. So this is a 6 in order to make it add up to 29. And that's going to do all the rest of this malarkey, I think. 8, 6, 6, 8, 6, 8, 6, 8. Now, which diagonal did I not add up in that? I think I didn't add up purple. So purple now is 1929 it's beautiful what a brilliant puzzle that is brilliant like yes wow arctan take a bow take a bow that's superb i didn't think it was that easy it's taken me nearly nearly 50 minutes so i'd put that in the sort of three out of five for difficulty medium difficulty category but i loved it and what a puzzle to celebrate leap day so happy birthday arctan let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.